We start in Puerto Rico, where Justino Diaz was one of the artists chosen to receive the 44th Kennedy Center Honors. Our Francis Felix had a chance to sit down with him in his home in Condado to talk about his life, career, and passion for music and being selected to receive one of the greatest honors. The Puerto Rican bass baritone Justino Diaz is one of the 2021 Kennedy Center honor recipients. <laughs> Justino Diaz, a proud son of a Puerto Rico and one of the world's legendary opera singers who gives us uh, the sound of soul, a four-decade career. When I, I got a call from uh, the Kennedy Center and I said, are you sure you want me to... Uh, I wasn't sure what she was talking about. Then when she really said, we want to make you one of the recipients of the Kennedy Honors this year. I couldn't believe it. Because it's one of those things you think about, but you never think it's going to happen to you. It's a mixture of a lot of uh, different disciplines, the theater, comedy, music, production, uh, TV, um, Motown. So it, there was a little bit for everybody. And of course, I represented opera. From the stages of the world's biggest opera houses, his defining baritone makes Shakespeare, Verdi, Puccini, who, they, as if they all wrote for him, each of the, it's amazing. I don't know whether you feel that way, pal, but that's how it comes across. <laughs> The passion for music and uh, the first time I discovered it, uh, it just happens. It's something that happens to you. You don't go looking for it. Uh, it finds you. Music, art, beauty finds you. And then you enter a world that you never knew before existed. No. I had put on my little medal that was given to me, my honor, uh, from the Ateneo de Puerto Rico. It was a Puerto Rican cultural club, which is about 200 years old. It's a very special, very prized possession of mine, and it means a lot to me. It represents the culture of my country, of my island. 50 years ago, Justino performed at the inauguration at the Kennedy Center, of the Kennedy Center. Later this evening, he returns with a well-deserved honor. Congratulations, Justino. I, I think you're, you're ready. Diaz is recognized by his colleagues not only for the quality of his voice, but also for the passion he has for his work. Reporting from Condado, Puerto Rico, Francis Felix. All right, thanks, Francis. In the meantime, in the Turks and Caicos, Grand Turk finally opened on Monday and allowed cruise ships in for the first time in two years. So this is good news for the economy that relies on tourism. Monday, December 13th was a grand day for the Turks and Caicos. Grand Turk finally reopened and welcomed cruise ships for the first time in almost two years. Tourism Minister Josephine Connolly expressed at the opening ceremony that the cruise ship's arrival brought to the island much needed hope. Tourism is the lifeblood of our economy. Over 70% of our GDP is derived from tourism. So I want you to know that we have to nourish that. Connolly added that the government is working to put capital back into the nation's capital and that the people should take advantage of the opportunity. Similarly, David Candid from Carnival Corporation said this is just the start. We're going to work hard together with all of you uh, to make this an even better destination. Hopefully our economic opportunities and contributions uh, to the Turks and Caicos Islands and to Grand Turk especially will continue and we'll work together to make sure we can improve those. Thank you uh, and we look forward to a very bright future ahead. 
Health is wealth. So as the island celebrates this opportunity, Health Minister Jamel Robinson assured islanders that the ministry has worked with stakeholders to formulate robust health protocols and measures. The essence of these protocols include pre-boarding and onboarding testing, vaccinate, vaccination requirements for passengers, information sharing between the ship and local health authorities before docking in our waters, and of course, health measures for visitors once they are on shore. The day was described as a day of hope and healing. Saxophonist Muhammad Cox reinforced that at the opening ceremony with a rendition of Michael Jackson's Heal the World. And that was our DeAndre Hamilton reporting there. Well, meantime, three trade unions in St. Vincent and the Grenadines have officially filed legal action challenging the government's mandatory COVID vaccines. Policy, the new policy they have, now St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Union, the Public Service Union, and the Police Welfare Association are party to the action, which was filed in court on Monday. Lead attorney Jomo Thomas said the application for judicial review is being brought against the Minister of Health, Wellness and the Environment, the Public Service Commission, the Commissioner of Police and the Attorney General of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. He said they are also contending that it's unconstitutional to force workers to be vaccinated. While we are applying for judicial review, we are also alerting the court to the fact that we are bringing a constitutional motion which says that all of the actions which the government has taken, including the declaration of the public health emergency, is unconstitutional, illegal, and void because the government did not follow the proper procedure in keeping with the declaration of uh, an emergency. In the meantime, the attorney said that the unions are also asking the court to review the decision of the Minister of Health, the Public Service Commission, and the Commissioner of Police to terminate the, employ the employment of at least seven workers, including two teachers, a customs officer, and two police officers. The implementation of the vaccine mandate has already resulted in more than 200 public sector workers who refused to get the jab being sent home. In meantime, businesses could soon require their employees to get a booster shot to be considered fully vaccinated. Now, this is an effort to combat the easily transmissible Omicron coronavirus variant. Public health officials say getting a booster helps provide protection against Omicron. New Mexico already has a booster mandate requiring healthcare workers to get the jab by mid-January. State workers and public school teachers in the state are also being asked to get boosted. Colleges and universities like Yale and Harvard are requiring booster shots for students, faculty and staff. And as New York City considers mandating boosters for its city workers, the city's Metropolitan Opera is requiring all performers, staff and audience members to show proof of a booster in order to attend a performance. 